Hi, my name is Grenville Clark. I'm the Internet Marketing Specialist with OttawaKiosk.com. Today I'm going to talk about direct marketing versus email newsletters. I've worked in the marketing space for 10 years uh, as well as uh, working in construction and working in the restaurant industry and almost everything in between. What I've found though is that there's a lot of good stuff to know about marketing within all of these industries and they're different. All of these industries specifically may or may not take advantage of sending you information to your email inbox. This could come in the form of direct mail, which you haven't subscribed for. It's something that will probably have to do with you. They know that. Or subscribed information that maybe you've been at a trade show, uh, maybe you've entered a contest, and you now get an email newsletter. But let's look at how both of those work really quickly. Direct email. Well, they'll send you information. If it's coming to your home, which would be your home email address, the likelihood is it's going to be information that you might want to apply in that space. So it could be flooring, it could be windows, and we all see it come in. This information often has to do with us fairly, fairly directly with our home, and it's offering some kind of deal. It might even be a coupon. But how do we accept that? Do, do we want this information? It's, it's, it's been pushed on us, it's been given to us. A lot of us feel uh, maybe a little bit disdain towards this information. Some people accept it willingly and it depends on uh, really your personality. It also depends on what you're doing at the time. If you're renovating, getting some information about decks or about painting might be a great idea. If that's not what you're doing, maybe you're going to be hitting the delete button. On the other hand, there's subscribed information that comes to you. It all might come in the form of an email newsletter and it's often around a topic that you're interested in. I know I get a golf email newsletter and it's about information that I want to know. Yes, of course, there's going to be subscriptions that go along with that or there might be deals on playing golf you know, with friends or they'll include a cart or coupons of some sort. But for the most part, I don't mind getting that email. Just because you start getting an email newsletter that you subscribe to doesn't mean you necessarily want to keep getting it. In that case, most companies will make the unsubscribe feature fairly clear. People want to know that easily they can get rid of this or they can stop getting it because maybe it's getting on their nerves. Some types of email newsletters are fairly general and they're about events or calendar of events that might be happening in a certain geographic region here in Ottawa or maybe elsewhere, some place that you're interested in. And in that case, what you find the demographic is families, maybe mothers, good incomes that want to stay busy. This is very typical of the type of information that's coming in, these generalized events and, and kind of contests and newsletter. In both cases, you have to decide what's working for you. Uh, whether as a consumer, you want the information to come in, and you don't mind keeping some of the stuff. And if you're a merchant or doing marketing, how do you want your information to be perceived? You know, if you're sending direct mail, you gotta understand that you are, in a certain sense, imposing or encroaching on somebody's space or time or basically just filling up their email box. How much do we like that? If somebody subscribed to your email newsletter and you want to keep those subscriptions going, you got to keep your content relevant. You got to include something that you can give back like coupons or contests and you got to keep the information lively and relevant.